Haberdasher Do. Hi, it's Jane from Haberdasher Do. Welcome to Sewing Bee Unpicked. It is 90s week. Uh, I'm really sorry, I missed last, last week's, um, which was Children's Week. I had a load of patterns to show you. Uh, but I just got too busy and had my daughter turned 18 and it was all go. So sorry, just didn't get around to doing it. So I'll make up for it this week. So it was 90s week and in the pattern challenge, they had to make a pair of cargo pants. So cargo pants, they had four and a half hours. They uh, had quite a lot of detail in them. They had the fly zip. They had the what Patrick called a bellows pocket, which is like a pocket with a had a pleat on it, and it had that kind of gusset around the edge as well. And there was top stitched. There's quite a bit of top stitching on uh, the cargo pants as well. Um, they had elasticated waistband, um, and they were looking they were looking for a crisp edge on the pocket. Um, there was a flap with a buttonhole on the pocket. Uh, they had to put the elastic in the waistband before you sew it onto the trouser. This seems to be a new thing. Um, to me, it's more difficult, but I would make a case and then thread the elastic through. But this is how they like to do things these days. And then they had to hand sew on a hooker bar and a button on the pocket. So there's quite a lot to do in the four and a half hours. Um, I found a few patterns for cargo pants. Uh, so if I start, oh, they're over here. <laughs> so um, McCall's 8206 do a cargo pant. Um, like this which has a pocket on the side it's not the bellows pocket that they did in the program uh, it also doesn't have an elasticated waist so that is fairly similar um, I did find a gents version as well 8264 in the calls range um, and that too is like the previous one it doesn't have a bellows pocket or an elasticated waist but it does have some of the other features uh, now I put these in um, uh, 7907 because this one does feature a bonus pocket so you could combine um, some of the patterns and hack them together um, and then there are a couple of others that I found 8057 this is an elasticated way so you could add pockets to this but these are these are a bit of a narrower leg uh, 8576 this is a pattern I've done um, before in this one E and then I just put elastic around the bottom. Uh, you get a nice travel trouser, as we call them in our house. Nice comfy trousers for long journeys. Uh, and then I have put this one in because I love it. 8292, um, but, uh, which is uh, like a yoke trouser with um, gathers around the yoke and just wide leg flaps of pants. They look great. I love those. Fabric wise, they needed to use a fairly sturdy woven, probably. Um, and then I think most of them chose a drill, which is like a, um, a heavyweight cotton. This is a black uh, cotton drill that we have in stock. Um, there were a couple of camo options. So we got a, a medium weight camo. That would be fine. You could have also used a needle cord or corduroy. We've got needle cord in stock. Um, that would have been lovely. Um, or even a denim. I didn't see anybody use a denim. Uh, so denims, we've got blue, black and uh, an undyed denim in stock. So all of those uh, would have worked. You could do it in a silkier fabric. I think Asma may have chosen a, a slightly silkier fabric to make a more glamorous uh, cargo pant. Sorry, I've got a roll of fabric falling down between my legs. There we go. Um, so Asma made... Um, a burgundy pair in a slightly shiny fabric. Um, saw her using scissors to cut it out as well. Um, everything was really nice. The, the side seam he said was a bit bumpy, which means that the fabric had pulled one side more than the other, and so it was a little bit puckered. Uh, Lizzie, she um, she did it in the camo fabric. She had a bit of a mare she she didn't get her button sewn on or a hook and bar her zip was set too low um there were quite a few things amiss with hers uh, mia in the teal she also uh, struggled with this one a bit in getting them finished they weren't hemmed um her zip with the zip guard uh, was wasn't far over enough it didn't cover the zip enough um, and they just weren't finished uh, lauren's in beige um 
she'd put the zip in the wrong place, but she'd realised and I picked it, but it had left a mark, which they picked up on, and her pockets weren't finished. Uh, and then Tony's uh, in the camo. Um, they were fairly well done. They said the waistband um, and the finishing was a little bit untidy, but the pockets were, you know, okay. And then Vicky's, the navy, uh, they couldn't really fault those. Um, they look really smart, really nicely finished uh, and nicely finished pockets. So at the end of that, uh, Vicky was in the lead and um, Lizzie was down the bottom. Uh, so the transformation challenge was uh, <laughs> it was quite a fun one uh, for a change. So I'm just turning my notes over. Um, it was transforming household textiles into a fancy dress outfit reminiscent of a 90s icon. Uh, they had 90 minutes. Um, I think there were some some really good outfits here. Lauren's uh, leopard print one was really good. I like the way she did the top in two halves and then just joined it with the buckle. That was very clever. Um, I thought Lizzie's prodigy one was actually pretty good. They just marked her down because they didn't know what it was. Um, and then who was at the bottom? Asma was at the bottom of that with her JLo inspired halter neck top. Top? Top. Halter neck top and lace on trousers so at the end of that lauren um came out on top with that one um and asma was at the bottom so at the end of those two rounds um lauren and vicky were joint first uh tony third mia fourth asma fifth and lizzie uh, in last place so the made to measure was a an outfit inspired by 90s supermodels uh, so there was a little bit of glamour and there were some not so glamorous ones as well. Um, I struggled to find any patterns, um, but I'll just go through them. So Asma's um, was inspired sort of outerwear, no, underwear as outerwear kind of thing. So it was a very fitted uh, bra top. It was a stretch, stretch jersey with a lace overlay. So she'd made a bra up for that then the dress and then a pleather fishtail skirt and then these pleather buckle straps at the back so there was quite a lot of detail in there and it fitted the model beautifully i know some people said well you could pull it in at the back with the straps but she'd made those bra cups and they they fitted the model perfectly so i can see why it won um lauren's cut on the bias dress with this cowl neck and shoestring straps shoestring straps um in a look like a very dark navy might have been black um it looked a very simple slip dress and we have people come and go oh i want to make this simple bias cut dress sewing on the bias is not easy um uh, i would avoid it at all costs <laughs> it's very tricky because this before lycra was invented um the, back in the 40s, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, um, fitted dresses were cut on the bias so that they they had a little bit of stretch because if you if you pull a piece of fabric on the grain, it's not going to stretch. As soon as you do it on the diagonal, you've got movement. Um, and that's what's difficult about sewing on the bias is there's so much movement and, you know, one, one side of the seam can move more than the other and then one side drags and this is the problem that... Um, uh, Lauren and also uh, Lizzie had to face. Uh, so Lauren's dress actually was made really well. Um, it 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 looked really lovely. It was a little bit tight across the bust, and they said there was a slight drag on one of the seams, and they said her shoestring straps weren't thin enough. I think they were nitpicking a bit because I think it was pretty well sewn considering the difficulty of it. Uh, Liz was also on a bias cut dress and she chose a metallic fabric, which is really unforgiving. It's just going to show everything. Um, hers was slightly different. It had little um, bust shaping and, and little gathers. Um, unfortunately, in the time given, it just wasn't possible to do because she spent a lot of time cutting out. Um, so, and she, yeah, she did French seams as well. So everything took a hell of a lot of time. Um, Mia, she did her Liz Hurley dress in velvet. So velvet, when you hold it up, if you stroke it, <laughs> it's smooth one way and rough the other. So you always have velvet 
I was always taught to have velvet and corduroy so that when you stroke yourself, it's smooth going down. Okay, so you have to make sure you cut all the panels going the same way. If one is going the other way, the colour is different and also the feel is different. So she had to make sure she was, it was all cut out um, the same way. Um, I thought it was made pretty well. It was a, a, a sort of a panelled dress. I have found a couple of patterns. So I've got 80034. They're not really like a dress, but they have got panels in because the clever thing, if you can see on the back there with this, you've got um, you've got lots of panels and seams where you can take it in to make sure it fits properly. So you've got lots of opportunity to you know get the fit right. So there's 8034 and the other one was 8179. So with a bit of pattern hacking, you could make something similar to hers. She had the big slit and chains. And I think they would have liked a bit more chain detail uh, just to accentuate that bit a bit. But, but pretty a pretty good fit and a well-made dress. Uh, Tony's bodycon dress. He chose scuba again. He did scuba last week. He made the child's dress, the white child's dress in scuba, and he used scuba again this week, which I thought was a little bit of a cop-out. Um, he did the bodycon dress with the diagonal seam uh, going across. It was immaculately done, um, but I just felt hot just looking at the model with the high neck and the long sleeves. <laughs> um, he, messed the mech he messed the neck up a bit as well. Um, uh, and we also saw Tony without his hat. <laughs> so and his glasses which was it's always weird seeing different people, uh, people in a different context isn't it so 7999 is um quite a similar pattern um it's quite a fitted jersey dress um that would do that one also i did find this one 8194 the same kind of principle but it's buttoned down the front so you get those two contrast colors in the front there um vicky's satin corset dress i thought was phenomenal on a plus size model um she fitted the bust beautifully she boned it not only was she working in satin which is another difficult fabric to work in but she did visible boning in a contrast fabric on the outside and it was it was beautiful and they criticized that she hadn't done one across around the sort of below the bust around the waist um just to finish it off i thought it was really really well made um and yeah i think that was it so at the end of that um asma got garment of the week i think it was a close call for me vicky's was also a contender for garment of the week but at the end of that lizzie was sadly languishing in bottom um mia also was down the bottom there but uh vicky and asma were at the top and they did well in the um made to measure challenge too so we had to say goodbye to lizzie which was a shame but she struggled in one of the challenges last week although she flew in the other two and then she struggled in everything this week so it's a shame to see her go because uh, i think she's very creative and a, a very good sewer and a really lovely person but that's how it is so next week was i've forgotten what they said next week was i wrote it down bear with me no can't find it uh something to do with men they're making things for men <laughs> i can't remember what anyway tune in and we'll find out thanks for watching bye